Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and I'm so grateful that you've taken time out of your busy day to spend some here with me. Today, I want to talk about success. And the reason that I want to talk about success is because how we define success affects how we get there. And this is a conversation that we have in our community all the time. And there are different aspects to success. There are different layers to success. There are different ways that we define success based on what we're doing. So we can talk about success academically. We can talk about success when we're studying for standardized tests. We can talk about success when it comes to the advancement that we're making. We can talk about success in so many different ways. We can talk about success socially. We can talk about it economically. We can talk about it in so many different ways. And one of the things that I want you to begin by considering is how you define success in general. When we're thinking about where we want to be in say five years, and even when you think about your success right now, how do you define it? Do you perceive yourself to be successful right now? Do you perceive yourself to be successful now as compared with five years ago or one year ago or six months ago? Do you perceive your relationships to be successful Do you perceive your work to be successful? Do you perceive that your strategy that you're implementing is successful? How are you defining success? And I want to talk more about big picture success than the, than the more minute successes that we can have along the way. So often when I'm working with my clients or actually just having conversations with people in general, we tend to define, and I used to do this as well define success based on numbers. We might define success based on test scores, based on our grades, based on whether or not we get in somewhere, whether or not we have reached our financial goals. A lot of what people do when they're defining success is attach this idea of success to a number. Now, a few things on this. One is that that number is always changing and it should change. So if you attribute success to a financial amount, let's say your income in a year or a contract that you get or something like that for a specific dollar amount, if you continue at that same dollar figure year after year after year after year, the first time you achieve that financial amount, you might feel like you've reached a milestone, like like you were successful. But if that number doesn't grow, you might feel unsuccessful. And so I think what's really important when we're talking about success and defining it is to acknowledge the fact that success is a moving target. We might feel as though if I get into a certain program, then I'll be successful. Then I, Then that will mean that I have succeeded. Or if I get a certain grade, that will mean that I've succeeded. But the thing is, And we talked about this in the episode on the slog, which we'll link in the show notes, that every time we're working towards a goal and we reach it, climbing up that mountain, and we reach the top of that mountain, we're at the bottom of the next one. And so all of a sudden, flags start going up and we say, okay, I've reached that, but what's next? I've succeeded at this based on what my definition of success was before, but now that's changed. So what I want to do is bring you a fresh way of thinking about success. And this is how I define success now. Like you and like others making an assumption, like most people, I used to define success based on numbers because so much of our society is based on numbers. But the thing is, is you realize over time that numbers are not all that it's about. 
numbers are decided in many cases by people other than you. You can advocate for yourself. You can work hard, but it's not actually about the numbers. It's about what the success that you achieve affords you. And when you are achieving success, that feeling of, or when you've achieved success as you perceive it, that feeling of what's next is going to come very quickly. It happens when we get into a program. It happens when we finish a program. We get in, we say, oh my gosh, I've done it. But then there's the what's next. Now I have to do the program. And then you graduate from the program and you think, okay, what's next? And so when we think about success at a much broader level, it becomes much less about the numbers and much more about what that success affords you over time, what opportunities, what choices, what freedom success affords you over time. So I want to flip the script as we do here so often. And I want to recalibrate and reconceptualize what we think about success and how we define success to be from a place of numbers and to a place of freedom, freedom to choose freedom to create, freedom to build, freedom to go after the opportunities that you want to, freedom to grow in the ways that you want. And that can be personally, it can be professionally, it should be both, but that you have freedom to decide how that happens and on your terms. So when we're talking about success and when we're talking about the freedom to choose, I want to unpack this a little bit because it's not readily obvious, I think, what that means. We've all been in a position where we have felt, or maybe you're in this position now, where you feel that things are out of your control, where you feel that other people's decisions are dictating your progress, your growth, your opportunity, your choices. You may feel constrained by other people's decisions, by other people's choices by other people's levels of comfort, by their expectations of you. And if you feel that way, I want you to think about what choices you have, what choices you have access to within those constraints. How can you grow even in moments of constraint? Because I believe that success is absolutely freedom to choose. And so when we're talking about how we make choices, We make choices from a place of abundance. We make choices from a place of growth. And I think most importantly, we make choices from the person, the perspective of the person that you want to be in, let's say, five years. And that allows us to have some really important perspective on what choices we're making out of fear, what excuses we're making, and what choices we should be making. So when you are making choices on your way to your success. When you're making choices, we always talk about your next best step. What is your next best step? What is the choice that you could make now? What are the choices that you could make now that will take you one step closer to living that life beyond your wildest dreams? And that means creating, building, and living and how to stay aligned with that. What are the choices that the you in five years from now would make today to get there? So when I'm making choices about growth personally and professionally, I'm not making choices from the me sitting here. I'm making choices from the me in five years. And I'm very clear on who that person is and what they want, what they've already achieved and more. And when I'm making choices as that person, as the highest version of myself in five years, that causes me to make choices today that I probably wouldn't make because those choices require hope. They require investment. They require foresight. They require a different way of thinking about how you're living your life. And so when we think about choices and remember success is relative, success is a continuum, success is relative, success is not fixed. It's also not finite. When we are thinking about choices that we're making as we move toward our success, what choices are we making today that are bringing us 
one step closer to the success that we will already have accomplished in five years or in 10 years. And that is something that might be hard to conceptualize for many of us because it takes work. It takes visualization. It takes forethought. It takes intention. And you don't have to have all the answers. So when you're thinking about where you want to be in five years or 10 years, you might not know exactly what that looks like, but that's okay. But if you work at it, you could have a pretty solid idea of what your environment looks like, what you look like, who's around you, and most importantly, how you feel. So ask yourself, how do you feel? How do I feel in five years? How do I feel in 10 years? I just had a conversation with somebody today about what I'm doing and what they're doing. And one of the things that came up was, okay, when we're 80 and we think back to what we're doing right now, how are we going to feel about that? And if you're in alignment with yourself and your goals and your success and how you perceive success, and you're able to look back when you're 80 or 90, what are you going to think? And my answer was, and this is the truth, I said, I will look back and I will think, man, I had a blast because I truly love everything that I'm doing. I love the people that I'm bringing with me. I love the people that I surround myself with. I love the communities that I'm building, that we are building. And I can honestly say that if I were to look back at what I'm doing now, even though I know that there's still so much growth that I'm looking forward to, that I am creating not only for myself, but also for my family, for our communities here at Apply Yourself and, and, and externally, I can honestly say that I would look back at this time and have really fond memories, thoughts about it and about what I'm doing because I believe in it. And people who are part of these communities are here for a reason. And we're building and the collaboration and the thought and the strategy and the growth is so meaningful and it's fun. It really is fun. And so I can honestly say that if I were to look back at this time, I would say I had a blast. And I think that's so important because we don't want to look back and have regrets. And when we think about regrets, we have to think about regrets and success hand in hand. And the thing with me is, Years ago, probably 20 years ago, I made a very conscious decision that I would never have regrets. And I made that choice because there were people around me who very clearly had regrets. And I thought, well, that sucks. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't want to look back and think I should have done something different or, you know, look back and think that I should have done more or look back and see things that I would have perceived to be failure as failure. And we talked about this in in our episode, Reframing Failure, which we'll link in the show notes. But so many people live with regret. And it's so obvious in the way that they talk about themselves and they talk about their experience, things they should have done, things they would have done if. And that sucks to think I should have done this. Well, for me, there's no such thing as should have. There's no such thing as I should have done this. Because when we say I should have done this, it's basically to me an indicator that someone either didn't give themselves the opportunity to do something, make a choice that they wanted to make and didn't. And I know that there are constraints. I know that there are systemic structural constraints, barriers, but we always also have choices within those constraints to get ourselves out of them and beyond them. And that's part of the work that we do here. And also regret is a really important indicator that there were lessons to be learned that we didn't learn. Somebody regrets something from that, that something happened. But the thing is, is in the moment, can we be so present and so intentional that we realize in the moment, not 20 years later, that we should have, or that we should in the moment, that there is a lesson to be learned here. And so for me, the reason that I have, that I can honestly say I have no regrets is not because I never made a mistake. It's not because I never felt like I was failing at something. It's because I always have been able to learn a lesson. 
And sometimes those lessons take some time to learn. But I have found that just identifying that there's a lesson to be learned here takes the pressure off a little bit. Okay, so you've made a mistake. Okay, so something didn't go your way. Okay, you feel like you might have failed at something. Well, first, let's reframe failure. And next, let's talk about what we can learn from this, where we can go, what opportunity you can give to yourself as a result of having gone through this. And that is so powerful. And also part of defining success for ourselves. If we're always beating ourselves down rather than elevating ourselves, what does that say about our success and how we're going to deal with success when we achieve it? Are we going to focus on the negative? Are we going to focus on all those mistakes? Mistakes are not a bad thing. We learn from mistakes. This is the point here is that we have to learn from everything that we do, whether it works out or not. Even if it does work out, we still have to learn lessons from it. How did we, how did we succeed at that? How did we achieve this? Is it something we could do again at a bigger level? Is it something that we can provide to others? How? So we can assess and reassess what happens both when we don't achieve something in the way that we anticipated and when we do. So when we're talking about regret, I want you to think about something that you regret something that maybe you wish hadn't happened, maybe something that you wish hadn't gone that way. And I want you now to think about what lesson you learned from it and move on from it. Use it to your advantage. Use it for your benefit. Use it to identify opportunity that's available to you, that's in front of you that you might not even be seeing because you're being so hard on yourself about it. Maybe it's socially, maybe it's personally, maybe it's professionally. But what can you learn from it? What would you have done differently now looking back? Because just because something happened that didn't go your way doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make you any less of who you are. It actually contributes to who you are and how you are bettering yourself, how you're elevating yourself. And that is what is helping you to define, create, and build that life beyond your wildest dreams. And the reason that we say that here, that you're building, creating a life beyond your wildest dreams is because where you will be is beyond anything that you can conceive of right now. And that is the antithesis to those limiting beliefs of, I can't, what if I don't, what if, what if, flip it. I can't even conceive of the life that I am building. I can't even conceive of all of the success that I'm going to have and make your choices from that point of view. Because I guarantee you, from that point of view, you don't have time for regrets. You have time for lessons. You don't have time to dwell. You don't have the energy to dwell and nor should you. You're not dwelling. You are putting your energy in the place where it is the most useful and efficient for you, which is what can I learn here? And how can that propel me forward? And that is so important. And once we identify and establish that we don't need to have regrets, regrets are like, you don't need them. People have them. You don't need them. And once we establish that, we move on to the learning that came from things that didn't go our way, no matter what it is. And there's also an element of letting go of what happened, whatever that may be letting go of attributing fault, letting go of needing to attribute that fault and looking at things really objectively saying, okay, this happened. What can I learn from it and how can I move on? And once you do that, you will feel so liberated. And then your next step is making those decisions from this place of growth, from this place of abundance, from this place of making sure that every single step that you take is towards, not backwards from, not away from, not neutral, but towards this life that you envision for yourself, that you are creating. And then we talk about how we define success, which is where we started. And how do we define success? How do I define success? Ability to choose, freedom. And there are lots of aspects to this. There's financial freedom. There's the ability to make your own choices for your own life and for people around you as needed, when needed. For example, if you have a family and also the choice to engage an opportunity when 
I mean, when opportunity arises, but opportunity is always there. You just have to see it. And when we're stuck in places of regret or when we're stuck in places of stagnation or settling or complacency, we don't see opportunity in the same way. So success is also seeing opportunity and going to get it. So I want to know if this resonates with you. And I want to know how you define success and if that has changed over time and what you think about my definition of success, because it's not attached to a number because numbers change. So what does success allow me to do? What kind of impact does success allow me to have? And I want you to ask yourself that too. What level of success or what successes allow you to have impact, allow you to have the choices that you're looking for and that you don't even know exist yet? So let me know. I can't wait to hear from you. And thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at Apply Yourself Global and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.